So with a potential move to steel at some point in the future, very, very likely, and some people feeling the need to shoot very, very high birds, there are still those that are very capable. You may have to make them yourselves because CIV will not allow manufacturers to make them. However, you can make them, but you need a three and a half inch gun to do it. And you can't really use a semi-auto on game shoots. So three and a half inch Magnum over and unders, we're finally getting to it. Here's a good one, the Hilditz Wildfowler. So first things first, this gun is 800 pounds. Look at the wood on this gun for 800 pounds. And be funny, that stock blank would cost you 800 pound. Anyway, that's, yeah. I mean, Yildiz always had fantastic wood, but this is particularly like, if you had it on a Caesar Guarini, you'd be like, yeah, that's all right. That's not bad. On an entry level Caesar Guarini, you go, that's pretty good. They're two and a half grand. If you had that on a, I'm not going to name any more names because, you know, people will stop sending me guns to review. So, the back, you have the Yildiz rubber pad. It's not that exciting. It's a rubber pad. The fit and finish on it is actually pretty good, though. There's a little bit of a lip on the wood, but not too bad. The wood comes in an oil finish, a high-gloss oil finish. They do wear off a little bit, these oil finishes they put on these. Being a wildfowler, it does surprise me they didn't use... Uh, polyurethane spray, uh, lacquer coating it, or something different. Maybe a matte oil finish, just like a linseed finish, like a real basic protection. It would be easy to wax something really natural so you can top it up really easily. That to me would have been logical, but it probably wouldn't have been so pretty and it wouldn't sell so well. You have a long but full pistol grip. It's actually very strangely upright, but it's also a long way from three. It's not really built for small hands. Laser jacket. Single trigger, action, steel action, more importantly. Uh, not an alloy action, which is what most people know that yield this is for. A selectable trigger with a safety as well. And it is a manual, automatic, sorry, it's an auto safety, but you can take that out. The last one I touched was a manual. It is case color hardened, or at least visually case color hardened, which is pretty. It is of course probably done chemically definitely done chemically as opposed to done uh, the more traditional method I would have thought but it does look pretty and uh, eliminates the issue of having a shiny action or putting a blue on it it's a good way of protecting that metal from what this gun is designed for which is obviously wildfowler which is why it's called the Yildiz Wildfowler uh, the forend is lever release type it, in fact it's pretty much the same as every other Yildiz externally from there on in the barrels are very similar apart from the fact this is where it does get exciting. That if we pull the forehand off, pull the action off, and have a look at the proof stamps, or not even the proof, the writing on the thing, we have 1289. That's pretty good. Usually I would say 76, which would be three inch. But they are not, this is a three and a half inch gun. So, why is this gun good? Apart from the pretty wood and the case got a hardened action, which is relatively exciting in an 800 quid gun anyway. The fact that this gun comes with it comes in a plastic case with a box with some chokes, all of which apart from the big ones are steel proofed, everything under half. This gun is an over and under that you can put exceptionally big loads through in steel. And a three and a half inch magnum steel is a great and wonderful thing. Many of the ones that you could buy off the shelf are probably a bit of a waste for three and a half inch ability. However, the ability for you to go out and home load some really big loads for shooting high birds through and over and under, that's quite exciting. How does it handle? Well, much the same as most of the Yildiz steel guns actually, which is better than their alloy guns. There is something about their steel guns that I kind of... Their alloy gun gets away with the quality of build and the quality of finish and the steel gun is less forgiving. And I don't mean that like it's bad, but it's not quite as slick and as intelligently designed as some other over and unders. 
There you go. That's that's that. Um, but you know, it is a budget gun. Accordingly, it's not doesn't pertain or pretend to be anything else. It's a very pretty budget gun. How does it handle better? The fact that there's a lot more weight in the action actually allows less of a front heavy affair. So if we come about half an inch, three quarters of an inch, an inch, three quarters of an inch in front of the hinge pin, we have a 30 inch barrel gun. That's there is many more front heavy guns out there. There you go. The 28 inch version of this gun is really nice. Another exciting thing about the Wildfowler is that they do a non-ejector model. For those of you who do Wildfowl, or at least walked up or rough shoot, or are in situations where you might want a three and a half inch magnum over and under, let's say you just do a bit of rough shooting and you occasionally see some geese. The ability to put a really big shell through there, or let's say you see foxes regularly and just want a really big lead shell to go through there. Just the ability to have that is really nice. And then the ability to have a non-ejector on top of that. For example, if you're in really long grass and you don't shoot bio ammo because everything else will be throwing plastic into the world and you go whack and you shoot that wonderful duck caught across you and you're out just mooching with a dog up the river and you do this and your ejector gun goes hunk and it flies out. So interestingly enough, we do all our testing on a field and we pick up every empty and we're meticulous and the grass is never that long and we still manage to miss them. Now, imagine doing that in long grass. The amount of shells I must have lost over the years, I mean, they don't haunt me, but I do feel guilty for it, you know? It's littering, you don't throw your Maccas out the window, do you? You don't know I'm gonna throw my empty wrappers out the window. That's not how you do. It's, it's just a hallmark of being a pretty crap person. And so that kind of <sighs> sits in that bracket. Hence, the non ejector version actually, certainly, I see on the market is more popular than the ejector version, which is cool. However, then it does limit you somewhat. You can always just take out your ejection jobbies, but it's not easy to put them back in. Yeah. I'm gonna leave it at that. Anyway, that was just a really quick look over this, which is the Yulit Wildfowler. It is very beautiful. It is good value for money. Mechanically and internally, go and check out our Yulit SPZ video because internally I believe them to be very, very similar indeed. But it is pretty and it is an extremely viable option for those who want to be smacking some really long range birds and need that extra firepower of a three and a half inch magnum. And it does actually handle very nicely indeed for an 800 quid cut. Guys, take care. Thank you very much for watching. See you soon.